memo. They escaped in a stolen semi with a dozen boxes of automatic weapons. M16s. Hey, San Diego, this reminds me of that coup we staged down in Angola, remember? 50,000 apiece, then all the arms we could carry out of there. Just what the hell are we fighting this time, San Diego? The bleeding liberals who give away what made this country great, huh? No, this is our new battlefield, right here. Right here at home. There is only one man who understands Stanning's mind. I will try to persuade him to come out of retirement. That man is Steve Austin. Oh! Oh. Oh. Are you all right? Yes, thank you. You're so strong. I'll bet you were some defensive back in college. I was a little too shy to make the team. I always had my, uh... Head in the clouds. <laughs> to think I reeled that in all by myself. I mean, you were there to help me secure the line. But imagine, I just don't know my own strength. Awesome. Totally. <laughs> yeah, totally. Come on. Nice formation, huh? Ever wish you were back at the controls when this colonel lost it? Sometimes. Only in a suicidal moment. <clears throat> Colonel, uh, Jerry Duke and I have been waiting to talk to you. Can we take a few minutes of your time alone? It's very important. It's about your son. So what does the Air Force want? Uh, Colonel Austin? Tell him, Duke. We've always told you it'd mean a lot to the student flyers if you came and talked to them. I mean you've been a hero in their eyes and everything. Yeah, well, heroes are frightened men who make bad decisions at good moments. But that's not what you wanted to talk to me about. No, it's about Michael. He uh, graduates this Thursday, and then he's out of our control. Mm -hmm. He's a hell of a pilot. A little eager, maybe. We thought we could deal with his attitude, and we can't. Then he starts intensive training. F-16s. Frankly, Colonel, I don't think he's ready. I mean, technically, yes. Emotionally, I'm worried about it. It's the Jewish mother in me. Now, we know you stayed away from the base for your own reasons, Colonel. And it's none of our business. But he is your son. We need you to talk to him. I'll think on it. Thank you, Colonel. All right, take care, Jack. Clear the rail. That's good. We're fine. Get that boom of push, please, Steve. Gently now. Yeah, thanks a lot. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Did you ever think of stopping by just to say hello, Oscar? Steve, this is serious. Yeah, well, I don't want to hear it. So don't try to bully me or blackmail me or wave the flag in front of my face. I retired from the agency for a reason. I don't think I ever heard what that was. Being a spy for OSI was bad for my health. People kept shooting at me. Steve, it's Fortress. They've regrouped. Mercenaries, freedom fighters. But it's our freedom that's being threatened. Led by a man. Code name, Santiago. Real name, unknown. We think he's a protege of Stennings. He's still in prison. Al Capone was in prison for 22 months, and he held his organization together. There's been a series of sabotage raids against munition factories and strategic sites throughout the Southwest. We don't know what they're doing, but they're back in business, all right. Yeah, well, I'm out of the business. I got no contacts, no backups, no lifelines. I wouldn't be any good to you. You know the way Stanning's mind works. If this wasn't critical, I wouldn't be here. Yes, you would. You just wouldn't be sugarcoating it like that. I put every cent I have into that boat. It's a home, it's a haven, and it's an escape. I like fishing. I like tranquility. I like not getting calls to go and save the world from itself. Well, I can see why running a charter boat does have its simple pleasures. Summer maiden. Any particular summer you had in mind when you named her? Well, I 
Marcus. I just couldn't forget her no matter how hard I tried. How hard did you try? Not very hard. How is she? Jamie? Oh, she's just fine. Still working for a rehabilitation center downtown. Teenagers from broken homes, crash victims, schizophrenia. She always did have a desire to help other people. One of the things you both shared. Isn't that true? Some cups of coffee. A few ironic words, mutual respect. That's what we share. Oh, come Nothing on, more. come on. There was more to that relationship than that. Maybe once. What if she remembered the way you felt before that skydiving accident? Yes, you were... but she didn't. Look, find yourself another operative against Fortress, Oscar. I've let you down too many times. Name one. Chris Williams, Budapest. You wanted my help then, I couldn't give it to you. You must have had your reasons. Yeah. It all worked out all right, didn't it? You got Williams out. You did get Williams out. What happened? One bullet from a high-powered rifle. He was in a closed cell. I had no right to ask you to go in there. Could have been Fortress that did it. Steve, you could set that right. Oh, you never let go, do you, Oscar? Can't help it. Our country gets in your blood. You don't think that kind of patriotism doesn't run through my veins? Didn't I give enough? Two legs, an arm, and an eye. You're the best we ever had. Thanks. But the answer's still no. <sighs> okay. I see your side. I just wish I could be on it, but be careful. Remember, you're the man who put Stenning away ten years ago. Fortress may go after you. Come on, I'm ancient history. Not too ancient, I hope. Thank you, boys. Hey, Michael. What? See you at the pub tonight? Gee, I don't know. Yeah, I'll see you there. Steve? General? Good-looking young fellow, isn't he? Yeah, he looks like his mother. Yes, we never talked about that. How did Karen die? Pneumonia. Little town called Placidville. Population about 104. It was snowing uh, the night I got there Christmas Eve. Whole town turned out to say how sorry they were, even though she'd only stayed in the hotel one night. Mm -hmm. It was that kind of town. Yeah. How old was the boy? He was six then. I sent him to live with Karen's sister Mary. He was 14 before he took any interest in his father. You know, Steve Austin, astronaut, hero. Hmm. So you got in touch with him, and that was that? No, he, uh, we never met. Oh. Wrote a couple of letters. Then came the M3F5 crash. Well, after that, you know, I was pretty busy. <laughs> yeah, Oscar Goldman likes his agents to keep a low profile. You're not supposed to know about Oscar Goldman. Well, I wasn't supposed to know about the stealth missile or my 50-second surprise birthday party either. Your son's a fine officer, Steve, but he takes too many chances. Yeah, I know. I had Jerry Dreyfus, Duke, and Jim on my charter boat yesterday. Not really to fish, just to corral me. Well, that was my idea. You know, the guys really care for your son. What, do you think I don't? Well, maybe you should note that. All right, there's a restaurant in the marina called The Schooner. Tonight, 8.30. All right. I'll make sure that 2nd Lieutenant Austin gets the message. Thanks, General. So 
what do we do now, Santiago? Follow him. So Colonel Austin didn't get together with his son. Is that right, General? Oh, they are gonna have dinner. Schooner, restaurant, tonight, 8.30. Good. Thank you, General. These all need your signature. Thank you, Trish. Martin, what are you doing for dinner tonight? Well, thank you very much, sir, but uh, uh, actually I was going to my bridge class. There's a radiant, elegant, extremely beautiful woman I'd like you to entertain. Well, you've come to the right man, sir. <clears throat> Any more trouble with Fortress, Oscar? Forget about Fortress. Tonight, all you have to worry about is being a father. Look, I abandoned his mother and deserted him. Would you want to talk to a father who did that? Well, I'm sure he cares about you. I mean, you put him through school. You call your sister-in-law every night, find out how he was, just guessing. You do remember telling me that he lived with your sister-in-law in Seattle. When did I tell you that? In France. Don't you remember that night? We were surrounded in that chateau, and uh, Stenning was throwing grenades at us. Oh, yeah, that's right. How did we get out of that one? I don't know. How do we ever get out of any of those things? Ah, you look pretty good. Thanks. Are you sure I look all right? It's not too sophisticated or too folksy? Just be yourself, pal. And, uh, positive thinking? Yeah. You know, I know he hates me. I'll be surprised if he even shows up at all. Oh, what do you guys think? It's too stiff. It's too military, right? I shouldn't wear the uniform. Yeah, you look sharp. What do you think, Captain? All skin and bones. They don't feed you in the military? Let your new father buy you a steak. Eat, eat. Go get him, hot shot. So if the downward spiral is arrested at the source, and you don't forget to compound the interest, and then the growth factor will come as soon as you do the readjustment to the budget, well, obviously the graph is going to go right off the chart. <laughs> but when I gave those figures to Hastings at the board meeting in Laguna, you can imagine the excitement. <laughs> Must have been tremendous. Can I tell you a secret? I've never been on a blind date before. Have you? <laughs> and to think your friends thought we might not be compatible. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Good evening. Do you have a reservation for Steve Austin for two? I'd like a booth somewhere quiet. Oh, I understand. The young lady hasn't arrived yet, sir. Oh, no, uh... But can I show you to your table, Mr. Austin? Uh, you know, uh... Enjoy your meal, sir. Thank you. I, I, I really hate to cut such a, a, a wonderful evening short, but I'm not really feeling very well, and I, I'd like to... Uh, well, you know, the odds against bronchitis or the flu at this time I'd of really year are astronomical. Kind of like to, I'd, I'd right. really like to just get some air. Could we do that, please? Yeah, uh, well, no problem. I think I'll get the check. Huh? Wait. Jamie? Oh, Steve, my goodness. Hi, how are you? I really wish I could stay and talk to you, but I can't right now. I'm sorry. I know it's been a long time. Yes, it has been a long time. Yes. My date is waiting out for me in the parking lot. I better get to him before he cons the parking kit out of his tip. Jamie. You know, I really thought I knew what I was going to say to you when I saw you again. Now, you're here, and I'm here, and I don't. So, goodbye. Wait, 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 wait just a minute. Hey, hey. 
Jamie, give me five minutes. There's somebody I want you to meet. Blonde or brunette? Well, come on, it's not what you think. It doesn't matter what I think. Well, that was never true. Steve, I just can't deal with you right now. You know, you know, you, you retreated inside yourself. No contacts, no friends. And when somebody needed you, you didn't care. What are you talking about? It, it's fine, OK? Just stay there. Obviously, you don't need anyone but yourself. Jamie. Please let go of me. No. Let go. Now, look what you made me do. Well, at least her bionic arm still works. Don't worry about the tip. Call me about the window, please. Is there a back way out of here? Uh, yes, out the back. So, Dad. Nice exit. You ever use the door? I'm glad you could make it. Sure. I mean, you look good. How are you? Things, I mean. I know what you mean. I'm OK. Dad, yeah, must have been a pretty strong guy to throw you through a window. <laughs> it was a girl. <laughs> I'd like to meet her someday. Uh, well, the odds aren't too good right now, but I'll let you know. The uh, window was an accident, but the emotions weren't. I haven't seen her in a long time. She's someone special? Uh, very special. How's Aunt Mary? <laughs> Fat, 50, sassy, and reads too much Judith Grant. You know, son, I didn't want to put you with her. But at the time, it was the only thing I could do. Look, Dad, I already rehearsed the scene for you. Sounded good. So let's get past that, OK? Your instructors, they uh, say you're a hell of a pilot. When's graduation? <sighs> Thursday? I'd consider it an honor if you could be there, Colonel. Well, I do have a charter that day. <laughs> sure. No sweat. Life goes on, right? I mean, we meet and shake hands, and you tell me to take it easy. Don't be the same reckless kid you were in your day. And I tell you, boy, it's been swell to meet a real American hero who just happens to be my father. What could be better? No promises, no commitments. Just real friendly. I tell you what, give me a high five. I'll check the instruments and take off. What do you want me to say? That I'm sorry for all the wasted years? Well, I am. And I, I can't find the words, but they're hard. What is it you want? The instant father? No. Just a friend I can talk to. A guy I can go fishing with. A pro I can talk flying with. Look, I don't know what happened to you in the years between the crash and the charter boat. But whatever it was, I hope you can come to terms with it. Because then maybe you can find some time for a son. <clears throat> it should be great to see you at graduation, Dad. The charter gets back in time. Nice going, Steve. Two people you care most about in the world, one throws you through a window and the other you can't even talk to. Good morning, Mr. Austin. Why does Stunning want this guy so badly? He's bionic, a fighting machine we can duplicate. He took the 
the side exit. He's heading for the boat show. Stop him, but remember, he's no good to us dead. Yeah, don't sweat it. I'll just stop his car. Try it. We'll never make it. Yes, I'd like to see Oscar Goldman. Do you have an appointment? Uh, no, ma'am. I... Oh, I'm sorry, sir. Without an appointment, it'd be absolutely impossible to. Uh, just tell him Steve Austin. Oh, Colonel Austin. Yes, yes, of course. You don't need an appointment. You could just rip the doors right off the hinges. Uh, oh, I mean, uh, Colonel Austin is here to see Mr. Goldman. Someone will be right with you. Thank you. So, you're the $6 million man. Yeah, probably 24 by now. I wonder what parts are bionic. Jim Castillo. That's with two L's. Well, they're all so young. Yes, we are. And not easily impressed. Do something bionic. What'd you have in mind? Uh, run to the end of the room and back with the flick of an eyelash. Leap a computer bank with a single bound. Maybe just bend an iron bar. Look, I don't do circus tricks. <laughs> Go on. Give the new kids on the block a treat. I mean, they need something to relieve the boredom. Is the Fortress doing a good enough job of that? Oh, that's right. You're the expert on this mercenary group, aren't you? The man who put Lyle Stenning away 10 years ago? What, are you coming to our rescue, Colonel? I'll try to keep you included. Hi, Trish. I'm hand-delivering our new celebrity. You got that updated file for me? Are there no chairs in your cage, Mr. Castigan? Must contact the zoo. It's Castilian, with two L's. She loves me, really. Just plain hard to get. So, have you thought about that drink tonight? I have thought of nothing else. Uh, I'm Trish O'Sullivan, Mr. Goldman's assistant. He wanted you to go right in. Thank you. You should play tennis sometime. <laughs> Got an answer about tonight? Of course. Go to hell. That's with two L's. Steve, you know John Fraser, our chief of staff. Colonel Austin, how are you? Well, a little confused. Somehow I got in the same firing line as Oscar. Now, what could Fortress want with me? Well, got a lot of sensitive information in that head. Keep me informed. Austin? They could have killed me. They wanted to take me alive. Now, why? I warned you about that, Steve. Talk to Stenning, or next time they may kill you. Look, this doesn't mean I'm coming back to OSI. Oh, of course not. Yeah, well, don't look at me with those big brown eyes. I know what's going on in that devilish mind of yours. Once he's back in the fold, once he feels the adrenaline flowing through those bionic veins... The thought never entered my head. Never con a con man. Always look over your shoulder. That's the first rule of surveillance, and that's with two L's. Oh, yes. Met Mr. Castilian, our new OSI agent. Yeah, just be careful that you don't come in here one day and find his feet up on your desk. I uh, understand you met Jamie last night. Oh. Yeah, now you just wouldn't have had anything to do with that now, would you? Me? Jamie just happened to be in that restaurant at the right time. Oscar, give me a break. When she looked at me, there was more than lost time between us. She had anger in her eyes, confusion, frustration. She said things to me I don't even understand. But I'll tell you one thing, I'm gonna find out. Steve. I know you're still in love with Jamie. Still waiting for her to come back to you, the old Jamie. The Jamie before the skydiving accident. How can I say this? You've got to learn to deal with a new Jamie. 
I mean, she's the same person, the same emotions, the same affection for you. But That's good advice, Dad, but it's a little too late. Jamie was in an accident, Steve, an explosion. Coming out of her concussion, she remembered everything. Why'd you hide this from me? I was afraid it might bring back your memories and your pain. Does it? No, not anymore. I really appreciate everything that you have done for me, Steve. And I appreciate uh, what we must have shared. But I don't feel those feelings now. I can't remember what it was like to be in love with you. I understand. Steve, she now remembers. A lot prettier than Austin, and easier to grab. 32nd <sighs> mile. I'm going to tell the Olympic Committee. Oscar. <laughs> Hi, babe. Oh, it's the first time I've run full out in a long time. Ever since I moved here, I've been having a hard time finding some place to, to run that was secluded enough, but today I had to run it off anyway. Running off what? Emotions. Excess emotions. Maybe you've been putting too much time in that clinic. Those emotions I can handle. It's the new ones I'm having trouble dealing with. And the next time you decide to play matchmaker, would you send me somebody a little more convincing? I'm afraid that Martin, as a computer programmer, just doesn't get it. Oh? I had to add up the check. <laughs> Well, it seemed like a pretty good idea at the time. <laughs> what? Me running into Steve? Jamie, you're blaming yourself, not Steve, for what went wrong in Budapest. Steve refused to return to the OSI for the same reasons you gave me that day in your apartment, remember? When the National Security Board came to pick you Oscar, up? Oscar, what is wrong with wanting to have a normal life, to be a normal human being? I've left you alone. Don't be so defensive. Sorry. Can you apologize for trying to get you and Steve together? I know what Chris Williams' death meant to you. I wanted to tell Steve everything, but I was under orders not to. Don't blame Steve. He's carrying enough guilt for both of you. If you want to blame somebody, try me. I thought a lot about Steve when I was in the hospital. When the concussion was wearing off, it was, uh, it was like I had walked into a room that was crowded with memories. But they were all just acquaintances. I mean, I, I knew them, but they were only familiar. And uh, then somebody walked in and opened a blind and there was light. And then I could see all the faces and I could remember everything. You knew I was going to remember about me, and Steve didn't too. Yeah. What are you going to do about it? Try not to throw him through another window. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I really don't know. I want you to stay away from him. Well, last night you're playing Cupid. Today you're sending me to my room. What is it? What's going on? Jamie, listen to me. Fortress had regrouped. They're back in business. No, 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 let me finish. They're after the secret of bionics. They tried to pick up Steve this morning. That's why you have to stay away from him. Yes, well. All these years I haven't been able to respond to him, and now that I can, I can't. Be careful. You're no stranger to Fortress, either. Mr. 
first inning. One cry and I'll twist your head off. Not in your nature. Should I call a guard? No, 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 no. This is just a little chat between you and me. Two adversaries getting together. All right, then get on with it. I want to know about Fortress. Not the old one. That was easy. That was money and power, but the new one. Balance. A return to the old values. America for Americans. You see, this country's dying. A cancer spreading faster than any communist takeover. I'm going to attack the disease at the source, that's all. Well, that sounds good to me. But you'll need professional soldiers to impose this righteous discipline. The takeover is already happening all around you. In the corridors of so-called power. You're just blind and can't see it, that's all. And if forces are quiet, you'll supply it. Well, here's the message. You hurt anyone close to me. And I'll come for you, Stenning. Personally. It's good we didn't have that little chat in the steam room. Hate to see those bionic limbs resting up on you. <laughs> that was good, Nick. Let's let's try some word association. Love. American style. Hope. Bob. Old ski knows. Fear. Nothing to fear in the twilight zone. All right, Nick. I'm not buying this television world. You don't live there. You're just visiting, so give me a break. Peace. War. Hate. Strength. Strength. Bionic. Where did you hear that word? It wasn't on the television. So then where? Around. Around where? Okay. Same time tomorrow. Beam me up, Scotty. Kirk out. Sounds good. Take me with you. Jamie, be careful out there. I think I saw this scene in an Edgar Allan Poe movie once. Mad scientist relaxing at home. Here, just, just a minute. <sighs> what are you doing? <laughs> see you, Austin. How are you? Good. Wait a minute, let's see. A little older, a little wiser, and I hope bionically sound. I only ache when it rains. How come the aging process hasn't caught up with you? You've been using some of these bionic parts. No one will ever know. Go ahead, take a look. Yeah, what do we got? There are three times as many components as in the legs we fitted you with. Now, we stitch a microcomputer right into the chest, and that pumps information around the electronic system. Very impressive. Take a look at this. Now, your left eye is a miracle. It's a miracle of modern science. But what if it had an added factor? A laser beam. Very thin. Very concentrated, capable of burning through an inch of steel. Come in hand if you got locked out of the house. Look, come here. Take a look at this. After Max, I went back to the drawing board, and I came up with a lot of breakthroughs since your day. You know, Fortress could have a field day if they raided this room. Fortress? They disbanded years ago. Anyway, security is your department, isn't it? Is that right? Are you back in the fold? On a temporary basis. It's terrific. It's great to see you, Steve. 
bone, bone splinter. Where did I leave that bone splinter? I've been experimenting with real bone laced into the latex fabric of the skin. Gives it a certain strength, certain texture. Anyway, you don't need to worry about me, Steve. Everybody's forgotten. Carol, hi, what's going on? Now, come on, I tried to call you. How was your dinner date last night? Great. It took him till dessert to realize I was blind. Oh. I'm so bad I asked him how he liked going out on a real blind date. Shame on you. How was yours? Well, it was eventful. Where are you taking the kids today? On a picnic. Oh, great. They're getting them together now. Okay. All right. See you see later. See you later. All right. Hey, Carol. The kids have been waiting for you. She's here, kids. Get into the car, Miss Summers. Oh, what a lovely invitation. I'm afraid I'm a little late for work. Uh -huh. Ah, no bionic tricks. My friend over there will start firing at those blind children at the van. What do you want? Well, if I told you it was your body, you might get the wrong idea. But that's exactly what we want. So get in. Now. time since I've been kidnapped. <laughs> yeah, well, they took me on Mr. Toad's wild ride this morning. Definitely an e-ticket at Disneyland. Fortress? They look like a bunch of tired mercenaries that ran out of countries to fight in. <laughs> at least you haven't lost your sense of humor. I certainly hope you kept yours the other night when you went flying through that window. Hey, hey, I'm hey. I'm sorry. You gave me a spectacular entrance. I fell right at the feet of my 23-year-old son. What? I wanted to tell you about him. But I guess I just never found the right moment. I married young right out of college before going into the Air Force. We tried to make it work. She was very fragile emotionally.
emotions that I'd buried. It was about Chris Williams. I was in Budapest with him. It was the first mission that I'd accepted from the OSI in, in years. And see, we, we got in some trouble and we were separated. There was a big explosion at the American embassy. And I was hurt. Oscar had to get me shipped out of there. And I, I guess I felt like I'd abandoned him. And then... And then so did I. When I heard Chris was killed, I felt so guilty. And I couldn't deal with my emotions, so I put some of it on to you. Oscar's the one that helped me realize how unfair that was. I mean, what I do for a living, I should know better. Well, I should have gone in there. I, I, no, I I'm trying to apologize now. Please, let me. Steve, I loved Chris. And I know that's hard for you to hear, because when I was in the hospital, when I woke up, I started remembering. Oscar told me. You know, the, the funny thing was that even then, there was um, something I couldn't put my finger on. It, it, there was something that just kept me from marrying Chris. And I guess now I know what that was. I mean, uh, you... Somebody you still cared about? Well, I guess I, I cared about it. I need time. I mean, of course, I, need, I, need, I would need time. To get to know me again. Yes, but I mean, no. I mean, I, I'm trying, look, I'm trying to say something that is long overdue, okay? Well, please, let me say it. Say it now. Maybe I could say that uh, I'll say see you around, and you say stay out of trouble, and we'll just try to stay in touch from now on. My son does his last solo flight tomorrow at 4 o'clock. It'd be great if you could be there. Oh, I think you ought to do that one on your own, don't you? Would you mind leaving through the door? Our window's closed today. <laughs> that was them. Hey, Megan, did you change your mind about tomorrow night? No way, fly boy. You should be a little friendlier to me. I was friendlier to you. Leave me alone. <laughs> what do you say we grab a beer before Jerry gets here, all right? What do you hear? What do you say? Drinks on the graduating class? Tradition at Matthew. Oh, is this celebrity buying drinks? Maybe if we're nice to him, he'll introduce us to Daddy. Now, here, that's the only way you got the graduation. You're way out of line, Drew Baker. Why don't you uh, take a walk and pull off? Hey, we're just interested. Here's a hotshot pilot with a famous father, and he keeps it a big secret. How come he never visits you, Austin? Can't answer that, huh? I hear he lost it in that jet crash. He couldn't get back into a fight or no guts. Hey, that's not true. Well, where is he? Sitting in a rocking chair on a porch somewhere? Creaking back and forth with faded memories? Fat chance. He flew an F-104 at 1.75. You think you could hack that, Brubaker? That's right. You can't flip over a T-38 without a note from your mother. <laughs> Think you could? I don't have to show off in an airplane or anywhere else. You could be graduating tomorrow, but you blew it, big fella, because you haven't got enough discipline to tie your own shoelaces. Maybe I got better things to do with my mornings. Isn't that right, darling? Come on, honey, don't pull away. You weren't so standoffish last week. I told you it was over, Tom. Now, please, you're hurting me. Hey, can't you tell you don't appeal to the lady, or should someone draw you a flight chart? Oh, I get it. Graduating class gets best pickings. Is that it? Hey, cool it, man. Go for it. <laughs> hey, you got to bribe to teach the graduating class a lesson. Ah! <laughs> 
Nice exit, son. You ever try using the door? Look, Dad, it's just a difference of opinion. Stay out of it. Looks like fun. Oscar thought I'd better keep an eye on your son in case Fortress tried to get to you through him. Nice, quiet assignment. Would now be a good time to impress me with Chauvonics? Jim Castillo. That's with two L. Come on, guys, let's go. The cops are here. Had a great time. Thanks. And don't forget to come back. <laughs> you. Gentle sirs, may I offer you a ticket a fine British ale? It's. You know, you got a nosebleed. And you got a bloody lip. Who was the big guy with the attitude problem? Brew Baker. He's a second lieutenant, Class C. He and other guy flies by the seat of his pants because his brains aren't in the cockpit. They kicked him out of the UPT program. Sure glad you were around. Yeah, well, I'd like to be around a lot more. I'd like to be the father you wanted me to be. That is, if you'll give me a chance. Sure. That's it? Well, what do you want, an instant son? <laughs> <laughs> what did Brute Baker say about me? He said after you crashed the M3 F5, you left your guts on the deck. Yeah, well, punch him in the mouth. I did. <laughs> Buy me some popcorn. Tell you what, butter, salt, get you the word. Just one clean shot. No, no, no. Do it my way. Use the car, split them up, we grab the kid, and we got Austin. Thank you very much. Run, kid, run! Anything you want to tell me, Dad? Well, what did you tell him? I said I would explain everything after graduation. Gave him a general idea. He thinks bionics are cool. Huh. Want to tell me about it? What? What it is you're not telling me. Lyle Stenning escaped from Fullgate Prison last night. Fun day at the pub last night? Oh, lots of fun. The Air Force really knows how to throw a party. Map and Tower, this is Rick 35. Takeoff instructions. Steve, just in time for your son solo. Let's 
Excuse me. Thanks. I really appreciate your coming. Just as unpredictable as ever. You're welcome. Big three five, you're cleared into position and cleared for takeoff. Maintain runway heading to three thousand. Roger, Mathen. Roger, Rick 35. Cleared for high speed pass along runway 07. Roger, starting pass. Looks good. The land. Roger, Mathen. Rick 35. Gear is down and locked. Mathen, I've got a problem here. I have overheating, hydraulic pressure dropping. She's not responding. Switch to alternate. Negative, Mathen. Alternate systems do not respond. Something wrong? You know, they say that your whole life passes before you in that last split second before death. You know what I saw when he came into that landing strip? I saw his whole life passing before him. Joys and sorrows, and triumphs and the failures, all gone in that one moment. And I stood there and watched it happen. There was nothing you could do about it. It was an accident, like just mine. like yours. I know, like mine, it's history repeating itself. Except in his case, there's no reprieve. There's no, no Rudy Wells with his celastic discs and Italian bone replacements and cybernetic veins. Steve, he has a chance. Don't take that away from him, OK? Colonel Austin. I'm Dr. Shepard. Your son is alive. I. Uh... I can't tell you why, except he has a will to live that just won't quit. Just give it to me straight. OK? We've had to amputate his right arm. 
Both his legs are crushed. His spine has snapped. Even if we could repair the damage to his legs, he'll never walk again. A piece of metal lodged in his head, and it severed the optic nerves to his right eye. Any damage to the brain? No. No, brain scan is normal. His heart is very strong. Respiratory system, fair. Outside of that, uh, broken ribs, cuts, lacerations, minor injuries that will heal with time, but for the rest, I'm afraid there's not much more we can do. No. No. There's something I can do. Dr. Davis? Stat. The boy really doesn't stand a chance. Oh, yes, he does, Doctor. I don't want to hear it, Oscar. Now, I've played this scene with you before over Jamie. Now, I don't want to know about the millions of dollars or the risk or the Senate committees or that the entire bionic project has been mothballed due to lack of funds or wisdom. I'm here to make you a deal. I'm listening. You let Rudy Wells operate on my son. I'll bring you Stenning and Fortress on a silver platter. No deal. Oscar. Rudy's on his way to the hospital. He's getting his team together. He's ready to operate on your boy tonight, with your permission. Oscar, I... John Prazer okayed it. We owe you a lot, pal. Steve? I wouldn't want you to think you're the only $6 million man around. He's gonna be all right. Physically, he's gonna be superb. I implanted some atomic microchips. They're new. No bigger than a fingernail into his legs. And I interface them with a computer in his chest. And if it goes right, He'll run incredibly fast. And if it malfunctions? His legs will shear apart. I gave him a new right arm. I replaced ten ribs with vitalium substitutes, like in your body. I reinforced his spine with cerosium. Now, as far as his right eye is concerned... You inserted the laser. The nerve networks from the brain, they were intact, so I just reprogrammed them. Now, that part was easy. Reprogramming him. That won't be. He'll be happy to be alive. Well, sure. Like you were. Like Jamie was. I mean, do you remember I sat in your hospital room and I made you listen to all the junk about synovial fluid and bionic capillaries and biochemical processes? Do you remember what you said to me? You said, go to hell. Can I talk to him? In a little while. Thanks, Rudy. Son? Why did you let them do this? Would you want your son made over in their own image? But Michael, I... I heard him talking in the recovery room. Uh, the nurses from OSI. 
I'm so excited. It's a breakthrough. In what? Medicine or mechanics? Look, Bionic saved my life. It was the only way to save yours. I don't want to live like this. Like some freak. Like... Like me? I couldn't stop thinking about it. That leap you made when the car was coming at us. You started telling me about bionics. And I thought it would be so cool to be like that. And now... Look, I felt the same way you do. But I came to terms with it. I came to understand that it made me better. Stronger inside. Why don't you go play hero for somebody else? Because whatever happens now... You lost your son in that crash. expect him to react any other way. Just give him some time. Let him see what his new body can do for him. It's his heart I've lost. I don't believe that. Steve, he's going to my clinic for rehabilitation. I've already arranged it. So just give me some time with him, okay? Where will you be? I made a promise to Oscar. Standing. When the hell do we move? When I get word from Washington that certain fortress agents are in place, when key government officials have been kidnapped, when certain industrialists have been killed, when we have Michael Austin. Hi. I'm Jamie Summers. I'm your therapist. I'm also an old friend of your father's. You just lost five points. So did you. You know, your physical therapy begins this afternoon. Your emotional therapy begins right now. So this is where it happens, huh? Why well, you climb inside my head, find out what cells have been burned out? And the real ones, of course. I understand the bionic ones will last for years. Unless you stand too close to a microwave. You do know that that word and your skills are not to be used outside these walls. And there are even areas in here that you're restricted to. All I know is that I'm the broken puppet getting ready for the strings to be pulled. Michael, why don't you tell me what you're feeling? Just, can you tell me what's going on inside of you? You wouldn't understand. About being bionic?
<laughs> it works. Frank, I think I found the answer. If we connect this circuit up with this circuit here, we've got it made. Now, what do you think? One sound, Dr. Wells, and you will die. It doesn't matter. You should not have disintegrated the lock. I don't like being cooped up. Oh, you stubborn. Another Steve Austin trait. This is really getting spooky. Michael, what, 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 is, what is the most, what is your most favorite thing in the world to do? Fly jets. No, no, I mean, just, just for yourself. Ride motorcycles? Okay, that's what I want you to do in your mind. That's the place I want you to go. I don't understand. I'm gonna tell you a story. There was a man who was imprisoned in a German prisoner of war camp. Okay, he was, he was thrown into solitary confinement. He was in darkness, total darkness for two years. So he decided to construct a clock. I mean, in, in his mind, he did this. He constructed a very intricate mechanism. So what, was he a clockmaker? No, I mean, he'd never, he'd never even taken the back off of a watch. And when he was finally released, I mean, he, he built that. He built that clock. It, uh, he built out cardboard. And you can still see it. I mean, today it's, it, it's in the museum at the Wright-Patterson Air Force Base. And his captors could never, ever touch that clock. And that's what I want you to do, Michael. I want you to find a place in your mind where you feel safe, and I want you to do something that makes you feel really good. And then I want you to think about being bionic and about your new life and what this means. Because right now you're fighting it and you're scared. Go someplace in your mind where you can feel safe. Tell me about you and my father. We're friends. I told you that. Nothing more than that? No. He said you were someone very special. That first night when we met after you, uh... Oh, yes, the exit. I do remember the exit. He said that, did he? He is somebody very special to me, too. How special? It's a purely therapy. I don't want to discuss it. Oh, you're in love with him. Why would you say something like that? Well, there's something in the way that he won't talk about you or you him. Well, that part you got right. We are not here to discuss my relationship with your father. Okay. The prisoner in Germany had this cardboard clock. I have my motorcycle. What do you do when you want to shut out the world, Doc? I run. As a matter of fact, I will race you to the end of the park. I'm not sure if I can cruise subsonic anymore. I'll give you a head start. Gee, thanks. You're a pal. beginning to feel like an obsolete model. Why didn't you tell me? Because it's a secret. And it was a long time ago. I was in a skydiving accident, and your father made the same life and death decision for me. That's the closeness you feel. That's, that's what binds us together. Uh, it's much more than that. It's a guess. So uh, what are you going to do about it? It's none of your business. Aha. Uh -huh. 
You don't know, do you? Leave me alone, you little brat. I made a spectroscopic test of the soil sample I found inside the car. It comes mainly from this area of the country. It's almost a thousand square miles. Yeah, I know. I also found a piece of glass in one of the tires. It's not ordinary glass. Very distinctive. I'm trying to track it down. What is it, Trish? Rudy Wells has disappeared. All of his equipment is gone. Michael, I hope I'm not disturbing you. Can I talk to you for a minute? Carol, hi. Just on my way out, what's up? Nice demonstration. One more move like that, and I cash in our insurance policy. Let's go. Uh. Take them to Steady. So, you're Steve Austin's son. Just a microchip off the old block. I'm sorry about the grease. I was uh, working on my motorcycle when the friendly boys grabbed me. Uh, is it okay if I leave it outside? What's he talking about? Well, maybe his mind needs a little bionic readjustment. So let me see if I got this straight. Uh, Fortress and Lyle Stenning. You want me to demonstrate every nuance of my newfound skills. And if I refuse, you kill me? Of course you do. No need for that kind of violence. The mind is where the real battles are fought. That's where we'll meet. You and I. Go for it. Take him out of here. Come on. Oh, wait a minute. If you're thinking of using your newfound skills to escape, by all means do so. But Rudy Wells, the man who gave you renewed life, will be dead. And so will the blind teacher from the center. Entirely up to you. Come on. I know you want to make him talk, but there's really not much time left. What about your OSI task force? Still searching. They won't find you, believe me. I had to see you. They came and took Michael. What? Three men, earlier tonight. Wh where? Uh, what? I... Just the facts, ma'am. The same men were here the other evening, 8.24 p.m. Did you hear where they were taking him? No, ma'am. They had Carol with them and... Carol? I thought they might say something to the other man. What other man? I, an alien life force captain, no doubt about it. He was the leader. It's only logical. I noted a signal he gave them. Thank you, Spock. Nick, come with me. Could you draw his face, the other man? Please, try to draw his face for me. Affirmative, Captain. Steve? Yeah, here. Jamie, I'm glad you're here. Castilian's found Fortress. They're in an abandoned glass factory. That'll be an overnight trip. Steve, they've taken Michael. They used my friend Carol as a hostage. How the hell? Here's how. John Prazier. That's how they've stayed one step ahead of us this entire time. One of my patients at the clinic identified him. They've also got Rudy Wells. Who are you calling? Who can we trust? Only Oscar and Castilian. And he's too arrogant to be bought.
Hope you can see me, Steve. And Jamie, hope you can hear this. I'm being watched, so... He says Oscar understands he can deliver 16 loyal OSI agents. He needs a diversionary backup. Good luck, big guy. Any ideas for the backup? Uh, I'm thinking. I mean, we have that long. What about the United States Air Force? <laughs> Not bad. You'll break, Austin. Yeah, oh, well, uh, <clears throat> if you need me, I'll be working on my motorcycle. I gotta take it apart, put it back together. But I'll be take all night. Try me tomorrow. Crazy. No luggage? No, we travel light. Well, this is the only room available, but it does have a nice large bed. Good night. Good night. Well, we uh, could run a clothesline right down the middle of it. Yeah. Yeah, we could. We... Or you could uh, turn your back. So, uh, be a gentleman. Please, don't snore. Okay? I'm so glad you didn't let that candle go out. Do you love this country? I do. I can't stand by and watch itself destruct any longer. Fighting other people's wars. Draining our reserves. Opening our veins so the scum of the earth can pour into our bloodstreams. You're pretty sick. Caught that yet, Stenning? <clears throat> How fast can you run? Fast enough. About my motorcycle. Your right eye. What range can the camera lens penetrate? Do you have night vision? What other special characteristics does it have? I may show you someday. Now, about the repairs for the bike. Forget your imaginary bike. It's the fuel injection system. I think... I'll buy the damn motorcycle from you! It's not for sale. Kill him. One bullet in the brain. Then put him on the operating table. Dr. Wells put him together. He can take him apart.
Jamie, I hope you can hear me. I've set the explosives. Rudy's being held in the South Annex next to the main building. Our Air Force boys should be here any second. A winery! A winery! <laughs> hey there. Listen, there's no need for guns. Hey, man, what's shaking? The name's Tom Brubaker. Such a big gun, too. Listen, dude, buddy. What is it? Uh, it's just a carload of drunks. Reardon's dealing with it, no sweat. Yeah, we're dry, that's all, yeah. We're just looking for some more supplies, right? Yeah, right yeah, yeah. It's a winery. It's on the map. <laughs> oh, we're not too late for the taste. Guys, guys, this is a glass bag. Oh, great, 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 great. You need glasses to drink. Listen, Cal, you've had enough to drink. Oh, he's losing his temper, isn't he? No, I don't think so. Do you? No. We have to straighten up. Now, listen. This is private property. You're breaking the law. Back in your car. Get oh, out of here. I respect that. Yes. Here, Rudy. I can't either. Go check.
It's okay, Carol. It's Michael. We're out of here. What are you guys doing here? Never mind. Take care of her. She's blind. Go. Stay down low. It's finished, Denning. It is for you. Can't do that either. You didn't kill him, did you? No, I can control the intensity of the beam. Bet you wish you had one. You can say that again. San Diego. Let's go. Come on now. Hey, Barry. You okay? Yeah. Steve? I forgot my motorcycle. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. No, no, no. At the center. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to propose a toast. With the destruction of Fortress. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, uh, what do you hear? What do you say? Huh? How does it feel to be a hero? Heroes are just frightened men that make bad decisions at good moments, right, Colonel? That's right. Michael, if you ever get tired of being top gun in the Air Force, how'd you like to come to work for me? No, 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 Oscar. He is not going to go to work for you. You think he has a choice? Jamie. Bye. Oscar, if you need us, try not to find us, huh? I'll try not to. Make a note of that, Trish. Noted. <laughs> oh, uh, hey, big fella. I just wanted to tell you that. You're welcome. And that's with one L. Well, you know I'm an orphan. But if I had a father, I'd want him to be just like you. Oh, don't depress me, huh? <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Well, we outnumbered. The Alamo wasn't that outnumbered. Hey, excuse me. As I was saying, back in the South Bronx, One we time were surrounded this in this alley by 14 people. I think my mother called. Dad. So, how do I say this, Doc? Straight out. I think that's the best way. Dad, look, I said some things in the hospital that, uh, well... Uh, I know. We both need some time. You to get used to your bionics and me to get to know my son. We'll make it. Certainly is a beautiful day, isn't it? It certainly is. I'm awfully glad you didn't give up on me. Where should we go? Somewhere to find the future. I know a small candlelit restaurant. Thank you. 